Hello everyone, I am Rishi Shukla, Field Application Staff Engineer in the Microcontrollers team for the Americas region. In this section, we are going to explore the debug authentication feature of the STM32H5 and go through the methods to perform regressions on our H5 device. We will be starting with an overview of debug authentication and the ecosystem around it, followed by a hands-on demo of the debug reopening and regression on the STM32H5 part. Let's begin with an overview of debug authentication. Debug authentication basically allows the user to perform a secure regression to open state, also called full regression, or to a trust zone closed state, also called a partial regression. Additionally, it also provides an option to reopen debug access on the STM32 device securely. Debug authentication usage depends on the nature of trust zone applications. In trust zone disabled application, the regression is achieved through a password-based mechanism, while in trust zone enabled applications, the same is achieved through a certificate chain mechanism. In password-based mechanism, the host sends the debug authentication password to the STM32 device, and the device compares the hash of the received password against the one that was previously provisioned in the device key storage. On a match, the product state is set to open. In certificate-based mechanisms, both regression and debug opening is possible. The host essentially sends a certificate followed by a debug authentication action request to the STM32 device. The STM32 device validates if the certificate fits the one that is provisioned, the accompanying authorized action matches the provisioned actions, and the action request matches the authorized action list carried by the certificate. The STM32 starts the challenge response procedure, illustrated in steps two and three. The STM32 verifies that the host owns the debug authentication private key before performing the requested action, regression or debug reopening, and the certificate carries the requested action. Here's an example of a mismatch in action request in the debug authentication procedure. Note that while the device is provisioned to handle requests for action two, it receives requests for action one, and as such, the request is blocked. Similarly, if the device is provisioned for multiple actions, such as action one and action two, the host certificate is expected to include matching action list. Receiving an action request not conforming to the action list in the certificate also results in the request being blocked. In a successful action request, both certificate and this STM32 device need to carry the action list and the action request needs to conform to the list resulting in a match and request being granted. In full regression, debug authentication erases the whole of the user flash memory, SRAM and OB keys. Full regression erases the debug authentication provision data, which is the certificate and authorized actions. Hence, the user must provision debug authentication data once again. After full regression, the STM32 device is in the open product state. Also, the STM32 DHUK is changed. Secure storage sections protected by DHUK extracted before regression cannot be reused after regression. In partial regression, debug authentication erases non-secure user flash memory, non-secure SRAM, and non-secure OB keys data. After partial regression, the STM32 is in the trust zone closed product state. In this state, the STM32 DHUK is changed. Secure storage sections protected by DHUK extracted before regression cannot be reused after regression. Note that the STM32 that does not support trust zone or when trust zone is not enabled does not support partial regression. Only debug authentication by certificate supports debug reopening. After reopening the debug access, the user can debug the STM32. 
Debug reopening does not change the STM32 product state. Note that this process is temporary. Power off the STM32 disables debug reopening and debug access is closed again. Now let's understand the ecosystem that facilitates debug authentication. Debug authentication operates on the ARM PSA ADAC secure protocol, where ADAC stands for the Authenticated Debug Access Control and utilizes the STM32 Debug Access Port 0, DAP0, and the Debug MCO IP for communication. The host PC internally utilizes the Secure Debug Manager, SDM library, through the programmer or IDE. We are going to look at how the components of the ecosystem interact with each other in the next few slides. In the provisioning phase, the STM32 Trusted Package Creator takes a debug authentication configuration .xml file to create the debug authentication configuration .obk file for the STM32 target device. This XML file includes the SHA-256 hash of the root public key and the essential permission masks. This is soon followed by the stm 32 q programmer programming the DA configuration OBK file onto the target device. Additionally, we need to generate a signed certificate. The stm 32 trusted package creator employs the ARM PSA ADAC tool along with the certificate generation XML file in order to create the certificate chain. A debug authentication service is launched by using the Q programmer or an IDE to send the certificate chain to the device. For today's demo, we will use the default keys and certificates available in the Secure Manager package. However, you're advised to generate custom keys and certificates for production. As such, I will just be demonstrating the procedure you may use to generate these new OBK file and certificates. The essential OBK files and the certificates can be generated using the STM32 Trusted Package Creator software. Click on the H5 tab to land on the OBK page. You need to select the daconfig.xml file from your system explorer. Click on open and browse to the following directory. Here you'll find the daconfig.xml file. Open this particular file. Here we note that we have key one root as the debug authentication root key. And we have the following SOC permissions. We have full regression and partial regression enabled. At the same time, we have intrusive secure and intrusive non-secure for HDPL level one, two, and three enabled in both categories. Another key item on this window is the OB key destination address, which for this device is 0x0FFD0100. You may choose to select a particular path for your output file and click on generate a new OB key. Similarly, we can generate the certificates by using the DA certificate gen tab. Here, we are going to select the H52M MCU. In the certificate role, you have the option to select root intermediate or leaf certificates, depending on which of the certificates you want to generate. It's essential to provide a root private key and a root public key. Again, the default keys are made available in the secure manager package under the keys directory. Also, your SOC permissions in the certificates need to conform to the SOC permissions made available in the OB key file. While generating intermediate or leaf certificates, you will need to add 
provide the additional files, such as the input certificate for chaining. And certificate file would be the path to your final certificate file output. Again, you can click on generate certificate to generate new certificates. However, we are going to work with the default certificates available in the Secure Manager package. For additional details on generating root, intermediate, and leaf certificates and understanding the benefits of certificate chaining, especially in scenarios that require restricted permissions to the various stakeholders in production and field support, please refer to the debug authentication how to introduction wiki page on our ST website. I would advise reviewing sections 5.2 in particular. The link to the page can be found in the resources slide at the end of part five presentation. One might wonder, why do we need debug authentication? Well, here's a scenario. The development is complete and the device has been released in closed state. While a product is on the field, Unfortunately, few devices are not working as per the specification. Customers return the product to the support team seeking debug and feedback assistance. In the upcoming hands-on demo, let's see what the support team can do to help address these cases. From part four, our STM32H5 device should be in closed product state. As previously discussed, Trustzone enabled applications employ certificate-based mechanism for debug authentication and permit users to perform debug reopening, partial regression, and full regression as per the SOC permissions masked in the provisioning stage. In this hands-on, we will go through the steps to perform each of these procedures. Start STM32Q programmer and let's look at the first possibility debug reopening. Click on connect. In the closed state, debug access is prohibited as we can note from this attempt. Click on OK. Debug authentication can be found in the secure programming tab denoted by the shield icon. In the secure programming tab, click on the DA tab to open debug authentication window and click on discover to perform device discovery. Note that these fields include critical information on our connected device. For instance, the locking mechanism of our device is certificate and the current product life cycle is set to the closed state. These fields also include unique identifiers such as SOC ID and device ID. The keys and certificate file paths are provided here. In this instance, we are using the key3leaf.pem file and the certleafchain.b64 file. Click on continue to proceed with permission selection. The permission selection tab allows you to choose one option at a time. Note that these options need to be made available in the .obk file provisioned in the STM32 device. For this iteration, as we would like to enable debug access for our non-secure SMAK application, we will select non-secure intrusive debug level three and click on execute. Please wait as the queue programmer processes our request. Click on OK. As you can see, queue programmer is now connected to our STM32H5 device. This demonstrates a successful debug authentication procedure. For now, you may go ahead and disconnect from the device. Now we can switch to the STM32 cube ID in order to debug our SMAK application. We select the main.c and add a breakpoint in the main function. We can go ahead, right click 
on the SMAK application. Click on Debug As and select Debug Configuration. We are going to use the SMAK Apply Debug Attach configuration. Ensure that in the startup, your load image and symbols are set as false or unchecked for download and checked for load symbols. Click OK and click Debug. You can click on pause to access the non-secure area of the flash. We are going to click on step over and we can try stepping through the code. This clearly demonstrates that debug reopen enables users access to debugging on the non-secure memory of the code. We can click stop or terminate to end our debug session. Remember, debug reopening is temporary. While the debug reopen is enabled, I can connect using the Cube Programmer or the Cube IDE. However, upon reset, this connection is lost. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to power cycle the board to reset the MCU. On detaching and reattaching the cable, the device should no longer be accessible via Cube IDE. And we are back to our initial state. Upon discovery, we can clearly see that the life cycle has been re reset to closed. Additionally, in cases where the part cannot be power cycled, for instance, if it has a battery backup or a hard reset is not possible, it is possible to close the debug access manually. This can be done by connecting the debug reopen device to the host PC, running the STM32Q programmer software, perform a dis device discovery, and select close debug. Here we note that target has successfully been locked. Another device discovery will illustrate that the device is now in closed state. We can now move on to partial regression. Click on continue to perform permission selection. If we scroll down, we notice partial regression available in the scroll down menu. Click on partial regression and select execute. The message illustrates that the debug authentication was successful. Remember, partial regression takes you back to trust zone closed state. And as such, you may try and access flash memory. You will note that the secure memory is still hidden, while if you try and read the non-secure memory, you'll notice that it's all been cleared, as in there is no longer an SMAK application in the non-secure zone. Now that we have done the partial regression, we can move on to performing a full regression on the device. For starters, please click on disconnect to disconnect the device and go back to the G secure programming tab. In the debug authentication, you will notice that the device is still in trust zone closed state. Following the previous procedure, click on continue. And finally, select full regression and click execute. Please wait as the process is completed. Debug authentication was successful. And now you can simply go to the option bytes and check 
in the product state that your device is now in the open state. Note that performing a full regression also disables the trust zone and erases the flash memories such that only the STI rod is currently provisioned on the device. That concludes our demo on debug authentication. A quick review of debug authentication is that it's a new feature of the STM32H5. Certificates allow fine control on what users can do with the target. This feature also facilitates the field return analysis and makes it easier for the support team to debug and provide support to the end customer. For additional resources on the topic, you may review the following links, videos, and documents on the ST website. And now I'd like to hand over the session to Mina to conclude this presentation.